Hi, this is Ibari and X from The Candid Frame, and this week I thought I would do something different. A couple of weeks ago, I was in South Africa uh, teaching at a photo conference on street photography, and during that time, I had the uh, opportunity to go out in the streets myself and uh, make some, some photographs. And uh, Fuji, South Africa, was kind enough to lend me an X-T2, which uh, I used during the trip. And I used that in order to create a series of images that led up to two images that I was really happy uh, with from the trip. And uh, for your benefit and for the people who actually saw the, uh, the selects at the conference, I thought I'd create uh, the video to walk you through the process that led up to the creation of those two images. So I'm going to start here with uh, the scene here. So I was walking down the street and I saw the light and the shadow that was created. So I was walking down the street when this scene caught my eye. And the very first thing that caught my eye, of course, was the light and the shadow. I like how the shadows uh, are created. You get this sort of L-shaped shadow at the, uh, at the top of the frame, as well as the shadow cast by the pillar and the sign. And you also have the mural and the graffiti and all of that. But it was the, the light and the shadow that initially sort of piqued my interest. Um, I'm always looking for light and shadow, and especially areas where... Uh, light transitions into shadow or vice versa. For me, it adds a very strong graphic shape as well as provides me very dramatic lighting from which to, to start from. So um, I see this scene, I'm across the street. I have a zoom lens on the, X-T, uh, on the X-T2. I can't remember um, what the zoom lens is. It's one of the kit lenses I, I think that it came with. So initially, I'm, I start making photographs, but I'm getting into the process of trying to refine my frame. And And as you've heard me talk about in previous videos, um, I'm always trying to figure out what my composition is. So initially, I'm framing this so that I'm including the street scene to the left of of the pillar because I'm always trying to add some depth to the image. So I'm trying to get two things. One, I'm trying to find my frame, but I'm also trying to find the elements that are going to enter that frame to help to make the shot work. So I'm aware of, you know, the light and the shadow that's indicated here, the line in the crosswalk here, the activity that's happening down this street, and any activity uh, in terms of movement that's happening here on the left hand, right hand side of the frame. So I'm shooting, and even though I know things may not completely work, I'm still trying to figure out how much do I include, how much do I exclude. I'm still trying to refine the composition, and as I start shooting a little more, I start thinking maybe I don't need to include that area of sidewalk onto the left. What if I start, you know, looking at this scene in terms of what's happening just in what's just in front of me without trying to add that added depth. While I'm doing that, I'm also shooting people as they come into the scene, trying to figure out, well, where is the sweet spot? Where do I need to have them in order for the shot to be maximally, maximally, max, maximally, that's not a word. Um, well, most effective. How about that? Um, so I'm noticing not only the position of the people, but whatever shadow that they cast uh, against the wall, because I'm getting people moving down the sidewalk. And because of the time of day, I'm seeing that the shadow uh, that the people cast adds an element to the scene that I had not really considered initially. So that becomes a factor in terms of, okay, where do they need to fall in order for it to work? So as you can see, I'm taking images of these guys and and other people here, uh, many of which don't work, but uh, I'm trying to sort of figure things out. So I move the camera over to to the left-hand side to include the post on the right and the shadow completely obscuring the area of the sidewalk and trying to figure out, okay, do I include this much more of the frame? Does that work with just a sliver of the shadow on the left? I know that I have some exposure issues, but I'm not really concerned with that right now. I'm just trying to figure out, well, what does my frame sort of look like. And I include some frames here with people walking here, but I quickly sort of realized that this frame doesn't work either because even though the pillar on the right um, is a nice line, um, it's distracting because the heart of the image here um, is in this area here that is sort of framed by this uh, by the shadow. So I, I kind of refine it. I correct my exposure so that I'm underexposing the scene dramatically. And at that point, there's less emphasis on what's happening here. Um, so, and I think, well, maybe that, that will work. And then I have this kid enter the frame. 
And it's just, I think, two, three frames, four, right? So I was sort of just figuring out, and she just comes out of nowhere. And then I really like this shot. And uh, I think this is one of the shots that works, uh, works probably the best of the series that I've shown you thus far. But uh, even as that moment passes by, I still continue to shoot because I'm still trying to figure things out. But the thing is, even if I looked at, I don't even know if I looked at the LCD at that point. I think I, I tend to uh, turn off the LCD playback on my camera and don't look and don't chimp. Uh, I just shoot and continue shooting uh, because I like figuring out whether the best shot worked later. Um, what the, you know, I don't want to assume that the shot that I just made is my best shot. There may be another opportunity uh, that um, may come as a result of me just continuing to shoot. So as you can see here, I'm continuing to, to expose frames as people are walking in the scene. And I've kind of settled on this overall composition here. And I'm just sort of waiting as people move into the scene, trying to figure out, can I get someone uh, interesting in the frame? Now, one of the things that I was doing at this point, it was that I wanted some more depth. I'd had singular people walking in the frame here, but when I saw these people coming here, I felt like there was the potential for something more because I wanted to see whether I could get multiple people in the frame and have it work in an interesting fashion. So we have this, these people here, of which this is probably one of the better of the frames there. I like the placement of the guy here. Uh, I like the kids here. Uh, just coming out of shadow, the shadow that's cast here. I like this kid here in the shadow here, but I don't like the fact that he's over. She, he's overlapping her in the frame. I would have loved to have had her just a little more over here and had a little more separation. But I was just trying to sort of figure out, can I get something with a little more, a um, little more com complexity and have it work? My overall frame, I've sort of figured out at this point. Um, and I've biased the exposure to emphasize the highlight and, and all that. So now it's just a matter of, you know, different things. I kind of like this frame here, but I don't like the fact that she's overlapped there on the frame. And then, but then I just keep shooting, trying to figure things, um, trying to figure things out, seeing if something better will come along. So at that point I move over to the corner and, uh, you, if you see this shadow that's here on this wall, this is the same shadow that you see here. And this is the little girl that was in the shot previously that I noted. Um, she, her parents, or, uh, her parents probably work near there or live near there because she kept popping in and out of the scene. So as soon as I got into the corner, you can see my shadow here in the lower left hand corner. She appeared again in the frame and I just made uh, a couple of shots as she moved over to the right. This is actually kind of a nice frame. You're just catching the, uh, the edge of her eye and her hand in the frame. Um, I'm not sure whether this completely works for me, but it's, it's, it's a nice frame. And I uh, shoot a couple of, of her, and then eventually she moves out. And then I start trying to figure out the scene again. Uh, as you can see, I'm pulling a little further back. I think I've adjusted the focal length on the on the zoom to a little wider. And uh, I think this guy was gesticulating uh, either because of my presence in my camera for whatever reason. And I just managed to catch it. I like the way the hands uh, cast a shadow on the wall, even though the hands themselves are caught off at the wrist. I like the guy's socks. Uh, but I just keep shooting, and as my, as is my nature, when I'm shooting at um, at intersections, I'm always trying to uh, take advantage of the fact that I'm a fixture there, so people are forced to move by me, and allows me to get much closer to them than I would normally. Um, with the images that you saw previously, I was across the street, so there was no proximity at all. But because I'm right here at the at the curb. Uh, people are forced to walk past me, which affords me an opportunity to shoot really, really close. I mean, this woman was in, in the foreground here. Uh, I could have touched her shoulder easily enough. Uh, this is an interesting frame. I kind of like this uh, the shot. But you can see I'm still aware of the light and the shadow that's overall in the scene. And you can see I'm having different people moving into the frame, but I'm also considering, you know, what I have in the background. That light and that shadow that initially drew my attention, uh, I'm making a part of the frame, as well as this the light and shadow that's on the left-hand side of the frame. So as people move into the scene, as they're about to cross the street, um, I'm making my shots. And I'm liking the fact that these people are fairly close to me. I'm, I'm, I'm figuring out exactly where I need them to be in order to balance the frame. Uh, in this shot, I have more than one person, which 
helps in terms of creating a nice balance between uh, the right hand side and the left hand side of the frame. I have this bright area here where a bunch of wigs or something are there which are problematic for me so having someone that obscures that is kind of important for me to, to try and get because you can see it in this frame. Uh, I'd have to sort of burn this in uh, but by having someone in that position I, I, I eliminate the issue. So I'm shooting and you know some people directly react to the presence of the camera I still make the shot but I, I don't I don't connect with them I'm not engaging them at all I just continue shooting and then suddenly this guy comes from around the corner and he just leans up against the wall and I think wow I have I might have something here because I hadn't um, uh, I didn't direct him to stand up against the wall he saw me there with my camera but I think he assumed that because I was pointing the camera here that I wasn't going to include him here in the frame. But I see him and I go, okay, this scene all of a sudden got a lot better. So I'm kind of refining the frame. He turns his head towards me, but I'm not connecting with him. I'm not making eye contact with him. So, so as different people come into the frame, I continue shooting, you know, and I'm seeing that, oh, you know, having him there really kind of helps. And then I see these other guys coming from the left-hand side of the frame. The guy starts looking over which is kind of interesting, you know, and he seems to be sort of anticipating or waiting for someone. I like the way the light cuts into his face, but it's still not a shot that's working for me, and then this happens. All of a sudden, this guy who is in the middle of the frame uh, makes direct contact with my lens, and this guy leans over from the wall uh, and reacts to him. And then there's this shadow of this other person who had just left the frame before, whose shadow is cast here, and we have this shadow cast here, and for me, wow, this frame just came together. Uh, so of the of the shots that I've shot in this series, this one really works. Uh, I think it has the depth that I was sort of pursuing earlier, even though this is a markedly different composition. But this 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 is the frame that works. But I keep shooting anyway, right? So this guy seems to have been reacting to this guy, but they I don't know what happened here. But he uh, obviously wasn't the person he was waiting for. But I keep shooting, trying to figure out, okay, is there something better? I don't just assume that the shot that I just made is the best shot and start chimping and uh, stop shooting. I keep keep shooting until I think I've exhausted all the possibilities. Here's another guy who's in pretty much the same position as the guy in the polka dotted shirt. There seems to be a connection between the two, but it's not as interesting because the guy at the wall is not leaning forward, and that's it. So here are the two shots that I initially settled on. I, in doing this video, I saw a couple of more images that I've kind of liked that I may have to reconsider. But this whole thing, this whole series of images, uh, happened just as a result of me paying attention to the light and shadow first and foremost. Uh, I saw that, and that's what drew my attention. And as you can see, I started working the scene and trying to exhaust all the possibilities in terms of framing, in terms of the positioning of different people entering and exiting the frame, um, constant refinement in terms of what I included uh, and excluded, uh, especially along the edge of the frame, and that's just practicing patience. Um, I was with a group of people, so I might have stayed here longer than I did um, uh, for, for, this, for this series of images, just because I thought it was really ripe with possibilities. And as the light changed, uh, the entire scene would have changed as a result. But considering what little time I spent there, uh, I thought this uh, turned out pretty, pretty well. So I hope you found that interesting. If you have any comments or suggestions, please post them below. And if you're just finding us for the first time, The Candid Frame is more than a YouTube channel. It's a podcast in which I interview photographers about their work and their career. Uh, I interviewed two photographers in South Africa while I was down there, and the most recent interview was with Alistair M McLaughlin. Um, fantastic photographer with a wonderful story to tell. So if you're a little behind in terms of listening to the podcast, listen to this podcast and the previous one to find out a little more about my experience in South Africa. And I am going to be in Texas, San Antonio, on November 18th, being uh, participating in 4x5 Photo, uh, photo Fest. I'll be conducting two live interviews uh, there with two local photographers, so you don't want to want to miss out. So you can go to uh, 4x5photofest.com and register if you haven't already. And if you come down and uh, see me, say hello. So thanks again for joining me, and I'll see you next time.